Functions are the main building block of any programming language and as a developer we often use functions in our project and one of the important characteristic of a function is reusability. If we create any function then we can reuse that function at multiple places and when we reuse the function at multiple places it means we are executing those functions every time. So executing such functions repeatedly is really inefficient especially for an extensive system that needs to do long and heavy computation. So the concept of memoization come to rescue of such expensive calculations. Hello everyone welcome back to my channel I am Nisha Singla and in today's session we are going to talk about one optimization technique with the help of memoization. So memoization is basically an optimization technique of storing the previously executed computations. So whenever the program needs the result of these computations the program will not have to execute that computation again. Instead, it will reuse the result of previously executing calculation. So this way the program will not have to repeat expensive calculation. So expensive functions are those functions which take some time in execution. So this is very important to optimize such function which take some time, right? So in the concept of memoization, what we do that whenever we call a function, so in that case, we basically store the result of that function temporarily as a cache. And then if the same request will make again for the same data, in that case, instead of doing that calculation again, we can return the result from the cache. So memoization is a technique of caching result of expensive function call to speed up the computer program by returning the cache result when the same input occurs again. So this way memoization will remember and retrieve these results without recalculating these value every time. And this concept is not new, right? In real life also, we have memoization concept. Like for an example, today, if you are learning about memoization, it's your first time, right? If you're learning about it. So you have to listen the, to the complete video. You have to understand it. But after this, if someone will ask you about memoization, then you can remember because it will be in your memory. So you can easily recall what it was. So it will not take that time for you to again remember what is memoization. So in the same manner, we can hold the output of a function in some storage and then we can reuse it if the same request is made. So this is very important concept. So when you implement memoization, it has lots of importance, right? Of course, it will reduce your execution time and it will increase the CPU performance as well. And a memoized function should be a pure function, right? Because we are going to store the result in a cache. So your function should be pure. Pure means for same input, your output should always be the same. So function execution does not mutate. So when called with a certain input, it should always return the same value regardless of how many times the function will be called. Now let's talk about how memoization works. So the concept of memoization basically implement with the help of two concepts of JavaScript. The first one is closure and the second one higher order function. So I have created a separate video in depth about these topics like what is closure, what is higher order function. So if you want to get a look on those topics, you can find it out. I will provide the link in the description. But for today's session, these two topics are important because without this uh, memoization will not complete because memoization is completely built on closures and higher order function. Higher order function is basically a function that accept another function as an argument or return a function as its output. And if I talk about closure, closure is a combination of function wrapped together with the reference to the corresponding state. So in that case, your inner function is going to remember the scope of your outer function even after I have completely executed my outer function. So this way we are going to hold our data in cache because that data will come from the closure. So on a high level, this is about closure and higher order function. So with this understanding, let me show you how to implement memoization in JavaScript. Suppose I'm creating one function here that will take one parameter and I just need to return a new number that will be 10 plus X. So every time I have to Whatever data I will get in the add function, I have to return new value to that by adding 10. Now, as of now, if you call this function like this, let me call it one more time. So here, if you run this one, this function is going to run two times, right? As of now, it's very simple, right? But suppose this function is really expensive function. Maybe it is doing some API call or maybe it's doing a lot of heavy calculation. So in that case, I am calling my function for with the same parameter, right? 5. So ideally, it, it will always return the same output for the same input. So in that case, re-executing, re-evaluating the complete function will really expensive. 
so ideally we should implement some kind of cash mechanism so that I can get the result faster. So now I need to wrap my add function into a memoize function so that I can know whether I need to get the data from cache or I have to execute my function. So let's create one memo function. So I'm giving it a name, very simple memo maybe. So as I told you to implement memoization, we have to create a higher order function. So in this case, this function is going to return one function. So when your function either return a function or take another function as an argument that is called higher order function. So this is a higher order function. Memo is a higher order function. Now from here, I have to either return the data from cache or I have to execute my add function. So how we are going to do that? For that, I will create one variable on the outer scope. Now this variable I have created in the outer scope of this function, right? But I will be able to use this data inside this and this function will always return the always remember the scope of this variable and this is called closure so here we are creating a closure as well okay so now what we are going to do here we are saying if i have this data in cache so of course i have to get the data here so this value id i will get here five so if i have this input idly what we do in the memoization whatever parameter we pass we hold it as a key in the cache so that we can know whether this key we have in the cache or not. So if I have this data in the cache, it means I need to return the result from cache or otherwise we are calculating the result. Let's talk about this part first because in, for the first time there will be nothing in the cache, right? So it will come here. So what is the result now we want? We want to get this function executed, right? So I have to get the reference of this function also somewhere. So my memo function will take one parameter that is my function. So here what I'm going to do, I'm going to call my function and I will pass this input to this function. So ideally when my higher order function will run, in that case I will pass this add function because my actual functionality is in this function and whatever argument I will pass this function is going to run uh, with that parameter and I will as this function will return the result that I will hold here. Now before returning the result because at the end I have to return the sum right. So before returning the result I have to store it in the cache here. So how we can do same way like in the cache for x key I want to store the result. So for the first time it will run this block and for the second time if for the same key I'm making a request at that time so this block is going to run so in that case I'm gonna return the result but not after calculating I will not call this function again I will directly return whatever I have in the cache now instead of this how we have to do first I have to call this memo function so here we can create one variable and we can say calculate and here I'm gonna call memo function which take one function as an argument and my function means which has an actual logic. So this is my add function. So now let's call this calculate function and calculate function means this block. So this is expecting one parameter here. So what we can do, we can pass some value to this. Maybe I'm, in, I'm passing 10. So when you run this one for the first time, this block will not run, right? Because I don't have anything in cache. So at that time it will do the calculation it will execute my actual function which might be taking too much time and I'll get the result. At this time I will hold it in the cache. So for the first time you will see calculating the result. Okay. And I got 20 because 10 plus 10, 20. Now assume the same function I need to reuse at some other point of time and with the same data. For the same input I want to call this function again. So this time when it will run for the second time this block is going to run because during first call I have stored the data in cache so this time this block will return true so when you run this now it will say return result from cache this block is running it means it, it didn't execute this add function again this add as of now looks very simple but in reality so assume it would be a very expensive function so it will not execute this function again because we read the data from cache how exactly my cache is creating let's do the console.log Idly here it will create an object of key value. Key will be my input whatever I will pass from here because 
memorization completely worked based on input if the same input will request again and in the value we can hold the data or result so this is the very basic implementation of memoization so again just to recall you memoization is basically built on two concept higher order function and closure because higher order function means i have to return one function from here that will have the cache logic another one is where you are implementing cache my inner function will remember the scope of my outer variable even after i have executing this function so calculate will remember the value of my cache so this is creating a closure for us if you call this function again with some different parameter so in that case it will again do this calculation because this value we don't have in cache right so when i run it again you can see this and when i will run it again with the same input you can see here return from cache so this is very efficient for the performance okay now even sometime we want that this addition should be done for n number of parameter even if i pass two parameter three parameter should work so you even you can optimize it further let's have one more demo where i want to make it work for n number of arguments so for that the first change would be here because i'm saying n number of arguments so i cannot decide whether it will take one parameter two parameter or three parameter let's use this rest operator here so it will return an array right and then you can apply the logic of addition so for there are different ways as a array you can um, simply use a loop and then you can do the addition but now we can use reduce method as well which it is much simpler i will use reduce on this which will take two parameter your total and your current value and what i'll do i will return something from here total plus current okay so this is my addition now in the memoize function what will be the change as i told you it will be n number of arguments so here also you have to read the arguments and in a same way you have to create uh, you have to check whether these any of the argument we have in the cache or not so i cannot hold this array in the cache directly right you have to it would be a string because this is a object is a json format so what you can do you can convert this or uh, args or this array into a string json string so i can say keys and i can say json dot stringify and ax so what it will do it will create a object json string of this array and then simply you can check if this key is there it means i have this request in the cache otherwise i don't have if it is if it is not there then i have to call that with that number of arguments and it will return me the result after that before returning the result i have to hold the result in my cache and then return the result and same here you will do something like this and here also you have to do the change it will remain same it just like that when you call from here you may want to pass multiple input save the changes and see you get the 60 result but first time it will calculate the result because during first call i will not have it in the cache but for the second call you will notice it will return from cache and can you see the key for my this type of request the key will be something like this because i have converted my array to json it's it's a string so it converted my complete request in a string format and this is the result so if i again call this one and with some different key maybe here 300 so see it will calculate it again because this time the key is changed so this is how you can use memoization and guys this topic is very important i don't think that in any application we don't use memoization if you have ever worked with react also there also we have pure components there we use memo right use memo hook is there so these concepts we use in all programming language it depend how they have implemented it but this feature will always be there and if you don't want to write the logic of memoization from scratch there are lots of library that give you this function like lodash library is there which give you memoize function built in you can directly use that so memoization is one of the important concept that every developer should know as its fundamental goal is to optimize your program 
and this is mainly seen if a program is performing heavy calculation memoization will cache these calculation so that uh, we will not have to you know again execute the same operation so i hope this concept is clear do let me know in the comment section how you found this session and i will see you in the next video with more interesting topic till then keep learning